The first thing you can do is, of course, to register and vote. Just go register and vote. And if lots of people vote, it's a lot harder to steal an election or to drive through some kind of uh, anti-democratic solution because most people won't vote for that. Work in a community organization. Create a community organization. Find a way of gathering with your neighbors around something that is important to you. You could certainly run for office, and we see more and more, even young people, um, running for local council or different positions in their local community. Your local government, trust me, is looking for more manpower um, in terms of what it's trying to do, and it wants more input from its citizens. It's still totally possible to communicate with your elected officials and just talk to them about what matters. And sometimes it feels that they don't listen, but letters and phone calls um, can really be a way to put elected officials, especially those who represent a lot of people, better in touch with the, the views of their constituency. Join a protest organization. I don't care what side you're on. Just go join an organization that is pressing for a change that you think is important and learn the skills of leadership and debate and advocacy because you're going to need more and more of that going forward. We see, even in pretty big cities, that if you can just mobilize 20 or 30 people for your cause in a pretty large community, you're likely to get a lot of attention from elected officials. And it's because most people aren't paying much attention to what's going on in local government. But the kinds of change you can make at the local level um, is massive compared to basically your voice at the national level, which of course is going to be drowned out by the millions and millions of other voices on most things. If you are a young person who's really informed and motivated to engage in democracy, I'd encourage them to really think about being an information leader in their own network. And what I mean by that is coming from research. Young people rely on other young people for news and information, what's credible, even how to think about certain candidates. And the person that's already interested in politics is an important asset in their own social network so that the other young people, their family, their siblings and cousins, even parents can get information. People follow politics way too much. They follow it in terms of like, oh, is my side winning or losing? You know, what's the latest gossip about, you know, who said what about whom in Congress? And it's not really helpful. It's not really what we're meant to do as citizens. So I would say, get off Twitter, Stop following politics online. Get involved in your local community, your local political system. Volunteer to be a poll worker. This generation of poll workers is getting ready to retire. We need people there to facilitate the most basic exercise of democracy, the vote. I think it's really important for people to sort of resist the urge to become enraged at the other side every time they um, sort of hear some rhetoric from a politician they follow or, or get an email from their party or whatever. Instead, think more about like, how can I spend my time and effort in politics in a way that's actually going to make my life better or other people's lives better? I still believe that democracy really rests on everyday interactions among people and it, it's really important for people to uh, know how to make decisions and govern together with other people who might be different from them and disagree with them. Seek out people that don't necessarily agree with you. We want to have communities building people that can solve problems through conversation and discourse that's informed and balanced. And if we can do it locally, we can do it nationally.